All right, we head out now to the Orange County Register building where a columnist for OC Outdoors and news director, Mr. David Whiting, is waiting for us. Uh, hi, David. How are you? Pretty good. Good. We're glad you could join us today. Um, the story that we're talking about is not of the uh, light and fun nature, but um, uh, we agree with you that it is a story that definitely needs to be told. Tell folks what uh, you've been working on. It's not. Um, it's, it's a pretty sad story, but I think there's some lessons for anyone who gets near the water, as a matter of fact, with this story. So I think that there are, um, and I talked to this young man's father. He was Tim Hatch, uh, 31 years old, Costa Mesa, grew up in Anaheim Hills where his parents live. Uh, terrific swimmer, certified scuba diver, just an amazing fitness. He was running part of the Orange County Marathon uh, before his knees gave him a little bit of trouble, but kind of fellow who, his dad tells me, could easily run 10 miles a couple of days a week. And here he is. You can see him here. He was, his fiance was out of the country uh, this wa weekend, but she's coming back. Um, pretty sad story. He was diving off of his dad's boat on Saturday. And uh, just a couple of little quick dives, diving down to 38 feet, which anybody who uh, has tried to dive down to the bottom of the pool knows that's pretty deep, but he can hold his breath for quite a while. Came up a couple of times. A little while later, he died down a third time and uh, did not dive down and did not come back up. His body was recovered at the bottom of the ocean there. So uh, pretty, pretty devastating to the family, obviously, and those who knew him. Uh, shallow water blackout is something that's been referred to. What, what is that, uh, David? Now, that's an interesting question, Ned, because I had never heard of this before. And like I said, I'm a certified diver, and I've been snorkeling or free diving literally for decades. I talked to a lot of other people in the underwater community. Many people know of it, uh, but most don't. Um, Bob Hatch, uh, Tim's father, certified diver, also had not heard of this, although it is taught in uh, scuba classes. There's a lot of information in those classes, and sometimes it's hard to keep track of, of some of those some of the concepts. But at any rate, um, it turns out that when you hyperventilate, you think you're saturating, super saturating the oxygen in your body, you're actually lowering the carbon dioxide. You already have all the oxygen that you can take in your body. And by lowering that carbon dioxide, your body thinks, I don't need to breathe. And that apparently is what happened on Saturday. That is just fascinating. I, I mean, I have my scuba certificate as well. I've never, I have never heard that. I, and I'm still a little unclear as to exactly what that is. I mean, did, so he just basically stopped breathing once he got down to, say, 35 or so feet? Yeah, um, obviously the autopsy has to come in before they can determine the exact cause of death, and it may never be known because what happens with a lot of these people where it happens is they simply drowned, and the fact that they might have hyperventilated unknowingly or knowingly, um, it's, it's easy just to take four or five breaths, a uh, really deep one, mm -hmm. exhaling, you're pushing out that um, carbon dioxide, right. you think you're saturating your body, and in, in fact, you're lowering those carbon dioxide levels. And you can swim along, you're going to feel a little bit woozy, but you're not going to have that kind of, I got to breathe, I got to head to the surface, right. I need to, I need to, you know, your body where it's just literally screaming because it turns out, not because it needs oxygen, it needs to get rid of the carbon dioxide, which in turn means you also need oxygen. But it's one of those funny things about the body. I've learned a lot of science in the last 24 hours yeah, but... and wish I'd, wish I'd known it earlier. Mm -hmm. We've only got about 30 seconds to go, David. Kind of curious, free divers and swimmers, what, what are a couple of things they should watch out for? Well, first of all, obviously, don't hyperventilate. You can take a couple of deep breaths, but not more than one or two at the most uh, before you go back down. Don't push it out there. And always, always swim with a buddy. Um, you know, we, we, it's an easy thing to break. You know what you're doing. You're a good swimmer. But you never know what's going to happen out there. And that's really uh, the, the tips. I'll have more tips, though, in tomorrow's newspaper and online. All right. Very good, David. Thank you so much for joining us. And, of course, our condolences go out to Tim Hatch's family. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Mm.